What's up guys? Welcome back to Thai Talk and this is episode 6. So today we're going to be installing some really really cool parts and I've been looking forward to doing this for a long time now. I've decided to go to my local shop which is Triple A Scooters and buy some new parts. So firstly I'll show you this it's the new coil. TWH brand as you can see as you know from the previous episodes my coil was broken it snapped off just here real pain in the ass but I've decided to buy a new coil it's cost around about $15 or somewhere around there I've also bought a new speedometer the reason for this is because my old speedometer is the original stock speedometer and it only went up to 60 kilometers per hour and now with as you can see I've got a new cylinder I'm gonna need a few extra kph to go on the speedometer I've also bought some really decent fully synthetic two-stroke oil this was recommended to me by a few people and they say it's really really great stuff now the piesta resistance the new cylinder kit it's 48 millimeter TWH kit TWH make great products I think so anyway they're very popular in Thailand and to go with that I've brought a new needle bearing as well because the original one who knows how long it's been on the scooter for so I might as well replace it this one is a BGM it was quite expensive so hopefully it does the job BGM seems to be a more pricey or more expensive brand than TWH so I thought it's an important part of the cylinder kit so spend a little bit extra so I guess we should get on with the fun part which is unboxing the cylinder kit so firstly let's open up the cylinder and the piston and have a look what's inside as you can see TWH have provided me with a lovely sticker don't know where that's going to go maybe on the new extended shroud that I made now let's have a look inside as you can see the box comes in two parts so in the top part you have all the gaskets you have the piston rings and the circlips for the piston so let's just take those out have a little closer inspection Now, you can see here you've got the head gasket, the base gasket, and the circlips for the piston. They all look like great quality parts, especially these piston rings. They look really thick, you can feel the weight of them, they look really well made. So I'm looking forward to installing these and getting them inside that cylinder kit. I know there's a lot of other cylinder kits out there and some of them will offer you certain parts inside like spark plugs and needle bearings but for 50 US dollars which is what this kit cost I think is value for money and good quality also. Okay guys so now that we've had a look at the top half of that box let's just put all these parts to the side so we don't lose them because that would bring some really big problems in the installation later. Now let's get a look at this cylinder and the piston also. As you can see the cylinder is packed in a plastic bag. Here's the wrist pin, also a very important part. You don't want to lose that so again put that with all the other pieces and just put it to the side, keep it safe. Now if we just pull this out of the bag, see if I can do this there we go now let's pull the piston out of the cylinder the piston comes pre lubricated so that it won't score the piston or the cylinder whilst it's inside the box and obviously moving around traveling etc so the piston looks really nice it's really smooth also the ports on the piston seem to be slightly chamfered I've seen on other cylinder kits the ports on the piston 
are absolutely a sharp edge and that's no good because that can snag up on certain parts inside the cylinder so thanks a lot TWH for making sure that that's already been done the top of the piston is quite smooth not too smooth I believe a little bit of roughness is okay now let's take a look at the cylinder itself there's the exhaust port looking nice and wide that's obviously a really good thing because often you need to get things ported so that it can be a bit wider this one already comes quite wide you can see there it's not too rough again inside sometimes when you buy cheaper kits the inside of the exhaust port is very rough and that needs to be smoothed or polished to make the gases flow a bit smoother now if we have a look inside the cylinder itself this all looks great here it's very smooth very shiny I don't know too much about the ports and the timings so I'll just say from what I look at it looks good of course it's a cast iron cylinder so if you wanted to hone it or do anything of course porting then I think you wouldn't have any issues doing that at all so if we just have a look from the top side again it looks very nice inside and again all the ports seem to have a very slight chamfer on them so obviously that's something that you need to do if you are buying very cheap kits they often need all of the ports chamfering just to allow for smoother movement of gases and air now let's take a look at the head again TWH head comes in some nice packaging there so let's get it out and have a closer look so as you can see everything's super shiny super smooth looking great I'm really happy with this kit so far it looks really good and compared to my 44 mil kit it does have some noticeable improvements the fins are different on the 48 mil kit to the 44 mil kit so I think that's an improvement on TWH's part I know somebody told me that actually you need to do a bit of machine work on the head to help with some overheating issues and that's something that I'm having a look into for the future and of course we've got more stickers next let's take a look at the coil again TWH parts reasonably priced good quality I'm really happy to get a new coil because my screw has been out of action for a while and now I can actually get it back on the road and with an extra large 48 millimeter kit as well so that's pretty much everything that I bought today I would say additionally you want to make sure that when installing a big bore kit or cylinder kit however you want to call it that you have some two stroke oil and some liquid gasket or silicone gasket as well because you'll need that for the process so let's go and get this stuff all installed on the scooter it's a lovely day outside in Thailand as always so I'm gonna go downstairs to where my scooter is and start the process so guys as you can see to speed things up a little bit for the sake of the video I've taken off the panels that are necessary to take off that's the seat the side panel the skirt panel and here it all is over here so now I can gain better access to everything that I need to see of course that extended shroud is over there as well so let's take a look at this then so firstly we'll change that coil that's been broken for so long it looks really sad and unhappy there as you can see that's where it broke and then also part of it came off as well in here this is where part of the coil sits I've got the CDI here this is an upgraded TWH CDI I'm just going to push that out of the way so I can have a look a little bit more at what needs to be done it's a very simple process replacing the coil there's two cables one is green one is black that corresponds to the coil there's also on the coil a green and black plug you just swap them over it's a very very easy process anyone can do that 
I don't think I need to go into too much detail about it, so we'll just go ahead and unplug that and swap it over. So, there you can see it's swapped over with the new cable. You can see there the green and black cable that I was saying about, and on the side of the TWH coil there's a green and black marker so you know exactly what to do. Now, if that was the only job you were going to do, you just put that back in where it sits, screw it in, and it's done. But of course, we've got a few little jobs to do here, so I'm just going to push it out of the way so it's not dangling around and getting in my way when I'm trying to remove the engine from the scooter. Okay guys, so now you see I've removed the head. These are the studs. They each require a 10 millimeter socket. They're quite hard to remove, so just go easy on them. Here's the old piston. It looks a little bit rich. Obviously we're not too worried about that because we're gonna be replacing the whole thing anyway. So next, let's remove the cylinder. Okay, and here we have the cylinder. This should just slide off. Obviously once you've removed the studs, there should be nothing holding it in. Just gently slide it out, being careful not to damage the piston of course you might want to keep that. You can see there's a little bit of carbon buildup on the exhaust port, but it's nothing too serious. Okay, next let's take a look at the piston. We can see from this that there was plenty of lubrication within the cylinder. The piston is really well coated in two-stroke oil. It looks like there was a little bit of blow-by, so therefore that suggests that the rings weren't completely sealed and it was letting through a little bit of burnt gases. Okay, so now let's remove the piston. And here it is. You can see there is a little bit of scoring on it and as we have a closer look, we can see there's actually quite a lot of blow-by there. So that shows that the rings really weren't sealing very well at all. I'm not sure why that is, but of course it doesn't matter too much because we're installing a new kit. So next up, let's take a look at the needle bearing. To me, it looks like it's in fairly good condition and could be reused, but I'm going to replace it for the BGM needle bearing that I showed you earlier on in the video. Sometimes certain issues with the stroke being too long and the piston hitting the cylinder head can actually destroy the needle bearing, but obviously as we can see here, it seems to be in okay condition. So next, let's actually compare the two needle bearings together. We can see there's some obvious differences here. It looks like the needles in the BGM bearing are actually shorter, whereas the outside edge is thicker. I assume this makes it stronger, but I'm not absolutely sure on that, so leave a comment if you do know the reason for this. So next, let's install the new needle bearing. And there it is, installed on the crank arm. One thing that I will suggest, which is very important, is before you install your needle bearing, make sure that you completely cover it in two-stroke oil. I've used the cap from the two-stroke bottle and filled it with oil and just dropped the needle bearing inside there and completely covered it. Everything needs to be fully lubricated before installation. So now we've got the piston installed. Of course, coat the piston very, very liberally with two-stroke oil. Then you just push the wrist pin through the needle bearing and apply the circlips. Applying the circlips can actually be very difficult, so make sure that you do that with care. Here we can see a comparison in between the original 44 mil piston and the new 48 mil piston. One thing that you need to make sure that you do is make sure when installing the piston that the EX or the arrow of course in this case it's EX, is facing towards the exhaust port. That's very important. So now let's move on to installing the cylinder. Now once again when installing the cylinder be sure to coat the outside edge of the cylinder walls with plenty of two-stroke fluid. This is really important for making sure that you don't get any seizing or any overheating issues after the installation. As you can see here, 
as I said before, the EX is pointing towards the exhaust. Something else that you need to make sure that you do is make sure that the piston is at top dead center when you do install the cylinder. This is an important part of the installation for timing reasons. So make sure the piston is right up as far as it can go when doing the installation. And guys, make sure that you use a good quality liquid gasket sealing paste on the top and bottom of the paper gasket to ensure a good seal and no air leaks. So next, let's take a look at the cylinder head. And of course, once again, this is the TWH 48mm cylinder kit, and here's the head for it. It's a little comparison in between the 44 and 48mm head. You can see that the fins are different on both of them. Here's the metal head gasket, and again, use some kind of silicone gasket paste on either side to ensure a perfect seal with no leaks. Okay guys, so obviously now you can see the scooter has been completely put back together bar just a side panel. Um, everything seems to have gone together well, there doesn't seem to be any problems. I'm not going to pressure test it because I don't have the kit to do that and I'm not entirely sure where to do that in Thailand. So I've put everything back together, tidied up and next thing obviously I'm going to have to try and switch it on for the first time and see if everything actually works. Because there is a chance that I didn't do this correctly, so we'll find out in just a couple of moments. And as you can see, I finally swapped out that silly sticker that I had there for the TWH sticker that came with the cylinder kit, and I think that works much better and looks pretty good there. So now the moment you've been waiting for, firing the scooter up after the build. Okay guys, as you can see, everything seemed to switch on pretty well. I'm really happy with the outcome of this, it seems to have worked first time. So I'm just going to give it a few heat cycles and just get those rings worn in nicely and then take it out for a short ride. I know there's a lot of you guys out there that want to do the cylinder kit installs and so on, so I hope this video has been at least a little help to you. So of course, like, comment, share and subscribe for much more Thai talk, two-stroke life, coming at you from the land of smiles, of course Thailand, and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. See you next time.